Okay, it, it can be a little confusing getting started in Unreal Game Engine. I know it was for me, so hopefully this will get you uh, up and running quickly. Um, you just have to go to epicgames.com and create a free account and then hit this Get Epic Games blue button, and I think that will download an installer. And then you install this, which is the Epic Games launcher. And it's a little confusing because it looks like their website, but it has two parts. Uh, it'll start like this at the home screen, and they have a store where you can buy games, and then a library of any games that you've either tried or bought. But then if you click on Unreal Engine here, there's a second part to this, and it shows, uh, I think these are links to articles on their website about Unreal Engine. They have uh, also tutorials they are pretty good and they have a marketplace where you can download free or purchase uh, environments and assets like animations and different things um, if you go to free and then free for the month every month they give away free stuff today I just downloaded this $150 modern city downtown for free um, if I go to my library again we're in the Unreal Engine area of the Epic games launcher not in the regular games area so this is not my games library this is my unreal engine library you see i've got all these versions of unreal engine the reason you might want older versions is if you start a movie or show uh and they start in an, a certain version they may not want to upgrade for various reasons but unreal is aggressively developing this thing so new versions come out pretty frequently click this black triangle to choose the version that you want to launch um, and below that would be any projects that you're currently working on. And below that in the vault, you can see the modern city downtown that I just downloaded. Um, so what I have to do is launch the game engine and create a new project and then come back here and add this to that new project if I want to open up that modern city downtown. So I'll click here to launch version 4.24.3. So anytime you launch Unreal, you have to launch it through this Epic Games launcher. It doesn't launch on its own like Photoshop. Okay, I forgot to uh, say that when you're in the Epic Games launcher for the first time, you probably have to hit a button that says Get Unreal Engine and then jump through the hoops to install it. Obviously, I already had it installed. Um, then once you hit this button to launch Unreal Engine, I think that uh, you should get this Unreal Project Browser to select or create a new project. These are um, different projects I've already worked on, but if you go down here and click on Film, Television, and Live Events, okay, then you can just select a template, choose blank. Uh, these other ones are for the complicated business of virtual production, obviously. Hit Next and uh, I would click with starter content and disable the ray tracing the first time just to see how your computer handles it and then name it and hit create project okay so I created a new project and called it this and so now I go back to the Epic Games launcher and I would uh, before I double click this to launch it, because right now it should be just empty, I will go down to this modern city that I downloaded from the, uh, the marketplace right here. And I would click add to project and then it would add this two gigabyte scene uh, to this project. Then I would double click this project. Um, I'm calling it a scene because uh, I work in film, but Unreal has all its own jargon from games, so you have to just bear with me. So Unreal uh, should look like this, um, and you have to go through the content browser to find that um, environment that you just downloaded. So <clears throat> by default this is turned off, so you have to click this little thing here, and it's basically like a, a, a server, and so when you open up uh, a big scene on a film, everything will be in here for the uh, Unreal scene. So under 
the content, it looks like it put this folder here. Um, there's some options here if you want to change the scale of how this looks or if you want to see it as a list, like so. Um, I keep it as tiles. So there's some new jargon here, blueprints, LUTs, all this stuff. Um, you can learn that later, but basically with this modern city selected, double click on maps, and this is what you usually would be opening. Uh, I'm going to open the modern city map underscore night because they have a day and a night version of this. So you just double click that and uh, go and watch YouTube videos for 10 or 15 minutes because it takes a while to open these scenes. This one's not even that big. It's two gigabytes, but um, on a big movie with a giant uh, big environment with a lot of textures and all kinds of stuff, it can <clears throat> start opening. And for some reason, very often it sits at 96% and you just walk away. It might be 20 minutes, 25 minutes sometimes, um, but it eventually will open and you'll be able to see everything. So I'm gonna stop the video for a minute. All right, we're in. Uh, I had opened this once before and it took longer, but uh, a lot of times the first time you open a scene takes the longest, but then it's faster. So this thing only took about a minute or two to open up this time. Um, and in the viewport, you can see the scene. I'm holding down uh, right click and tumbling around a little bit. And right away, you notice there's all this weird stuff in there. You can hit G as long as this window is highlighted. You see the yellow uh, frame around it. If your cursor's over this and the window's highlighted, you can hit G and toggle those things on and off. Um, they are lights, like you can, um, you can see this light here. Uh, there's various things, but turn that off if it's distracting. Also, it's pretty dark, um, but this is typical of what I would see on a movie uh, if our department and, and uh, previs had been working on it and lighting it and stuff. So the first thing I might do is left click under lit and click unlit and so this is unlit. It's ugly, but sometimes it makes it easier to see. Left click, go back to lit. Uh, usually the scene will be like this. Uh, it can be quite dark. If you highlight or if you select something you don't want, uh, just hit escape. But if you go back to lit and click off game settings, it frees up this slider. So you can kind of adjust the house lights to wherever you want. Um, maybe leave it there. Um, so if I hold down the right mouse button, I'm tumbling around. If I hold down the right mouse button and press W, I go forward. S, I go back. A is left. D is right. Q is down. E is up. You can hold them together and really fly around pretty effectively. Right here is the camera speed. I guess 4 is the default. If you turn it up, you go real fast. I was pressing E key while holding down right mouse button. Um, if you're worried about something being selected, like this thing here is being selected, you can hit escape. Um, right mouse button and Q is getting me back down. Now, if I want to fine tune the camera move, I turn it down to one and you can see it is a very slow move. Put it back to maybe two. So this is pretty typical of a scene that might be a real environment with some existing buildings and then a, a digital set extension, or it might be on a back lot. But this would be built by art department and previs and or virtual art department. And so now you're in and you can move around and get a sense of uh, what the environment's like. This one happens to have a bunch of cameras in it. If you look over here at the world outliner, there's also a bunch of lights, and there's fog in there. You scroll down. Uh, there's these are just some of the pieces. I guess the the 3D. If you uh, select something and hit and put your cursor in the viewport and hit F, you'll sort of frame it like in Maya. Um, in this case, it's just like a piece of the ground or something, and I don't know where I'm at inside a building maybe. 
Um, if you get lost like this, you can, uh, there's a couple things you can do. One is you can like um, click on one of the cameras and you can right click and go to the airplane and say pilot the camera. Now you're in this camera that somebody created. Uh, I believe though it's locked, like if I hold down right mouse button, I can't move around. Um, normally I would not mess with that, but I just want to show you with that camera selected, and you can see I'm piloting it in the details panel, uh, or no, sorry, here I think you can right click over that and then go down to transform and unclick lock actor movement, and now I freed up that camera. Um, but working on a movie, this might be a camera that they want to stay. This one, you know, I'm just working on some sample scene that I got for free, so I can do whatever I want. But one thing you can do is um, you can take a camera and go, again, I'm right-clicking, go Edit, Duplicate. And now with that thing still selected, I can uh, rename it and hit Return. Now I've got my own camera, and I can right-click on it and go pilot that camera. So this is my camera now. I can do whatever I want with it. Um, I don't know what kind of camera this is. On a film, there will eventually be a real camera that matches the real-world camera that previs or visual effects probably will set up, um, and it, it will be you know just like whatever camera they're using, the Alexa or whatever. In this case, um, the film back with this it says it's custom. I don't know uh, what that means, but if someone has created their own camera and changed the film back settings, it'll say custom. The uh, outliner, or sorry, the world outliner here has everything, and if you get lost, because there's hundreds of things in here, the way you find it is you search for something by name, so there's my camera that I had named, or I could search for anything that has cam in it, and it shows all of them. Sometimes if you have lost something in here, it's because you forgot to clear your filter. Um, if this is a, an angle that you want, for whatever reason, uh, maybe to do a piece of concept art or uh, somehow use it in your storyboard, you can go to this little black triangle here and say, sorry, black triangle, go down to high resolution screenshot, just keep this at one, and you don't have to click any of these things, you just hit the little camera, and it takes a picture. And for a moment, this link will be there, you can click on it, and you can go into uh, where that uh, image is. Here it is. It's created a PNG, named it High Risk Screenshot 1. Click out of here, and then if you come back and you do a second one, black triangle, high resolution screenshot, take it, and click on the link that's up there for a moment. You come back, you see there's your second image. <coughs> Um, looks pretty clear. Click out of here. Um, one thing for the concept artist that uh, might be great is if you go into the high resolution screenshot and you uh, click on some of these things, buffer visualization target, um, custom depth as mask. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Anyway, I clicked on this buffer visualization target, I take the shot. And you see it's taking longer. So now when I go to that link, you see that uh, Unreal has not only taken, uh, that's our screenshot, but here's probably unlit mode. There's, um, I don't know what lighting model. Uh, this is metallic opacity. So you can see these could be useful for um, masks in Photoshop. It makes a whole bunch of them. So I found that to be pretty useful. I don't know if... Um, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. Look, there's your windows. That could be helpful. Um, I don't think Unreal can do an actual uh, clown pass like Maya, but maybe somebody can find that. I don't think it does, though. Um, back to Unreal, and it's saving out-of-date packages. Sometimes it does this. A lot of times you get warnings and things like that. Um, I just ignore them. I don't... Uh, I usually am not saving anything when I'm working in a scene on a movie because I'm just in there temporarily to get a screenshot or get a sense of where I'm at, where the scene is, um, and I don't want to be saving over or breaking anything 
with all the different departments that are working on this stuff. Um, let's uh, go to another one of these. So I clicked on this camera. Now I'm piloting that camera, the Shep Burger one that I made, so I can hit eject and I can go over to this Metro Stairs, right click on it, pilot that. Now I'm in another area, but this camera's locked as I showed you before. Um, right click on it, go down to transform, lock actor movement. So um, free to move around, maybe uh, go under lit, do the slider a little bit, lighten up in here. That's just the house lights. Sometimes I will grab a point light here if, uh, if there's something that I want to do. So I just put a light in there, kind of screwed up whoever did some lighting in there. But uh, I might name this, just keep organized. And then this is in the details panel. You have the location of it, but mostly I would just uh, turn the intensity up or down for something that I might need. If I'm trying to do a, a, a screenshot and I need some, like here, I need this corner to be separated a little bit better, I might add something like that in there. Um, and let's see, let's find another problem. I type in cam, got, uh, this is, so you see I clicked on this other camera while I'm still piloting the uh, Metro Stairs one. If I inject that, now I'm in um, this, I'm still in that same location, but I'm just uh, in like my user perspective camera, if you will. Um, and this pop-up is really annoying. So the way you get rid of that is you go edit, editor preferences, and then in the search bar, type in camera, and scroll down to here, and you can either change the size with this slider, so you could get up just a small one down in the corner that might help you, or uncheck preview selected camera. It's on by default, so I don't like it. So that solved that. Um, going through, the, got a pretty good set here. Oh, flying out, so you know maybe this. I'm at speed of four, so maybe if I bring it to two, and then maybe frame up what my shot might be. Holding down right mouse button, Q to lower, W to go forward. And if that was my shot, I can go black triangle, uh, high resolution screenshot, and take the picture. So a lot of times you can go through really quickly and be uh, getting shots of your environment, and you may not have to go back into Unreal anymore because you've already got enough pictures of it. Uh, one of the problems with Unreal is when everything gets, uh, you know, built in there, it also means that it's trapped in this big scene file. This thing's only two gigabytes, but sometimes they can be massive and take a long time to open, and there's not a machine available for you if you don't have your own. Uh, and so it just becomes this thing where the deeper we get into the pre-production, uh, the harder and harder it is to actually get into this amazing uh, real-time scene. So sometimes I'll just go and do my own little scout and take pictures.